Train the muscles, not the joints. Welcome back to Natural Galant Bodybuilding, Motion. And today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about why I found one rep range is not always the perfect rep range to stick to. Now, as you go about your training, you're going to find that certain muscle groups respond better than others. You know, this is pretty normal for most people. But what you're also going to find, which is something I didn't expect, is that certain muscle groups respond better to certain rep ranges than others. So as a general rule, I found my side delts seem to respond better when I'm using some medium to lighter weights and doing lots of perfect type of isolation movements, where when I train chest, if I stick to super high rep ranges consistently for too long a period of time, I notice that my chest shrinks more than grows from that. So because of this, you have to remain vigilant in your training and, and basically really be honest with yourself and say, hey, am I just ego lifting, lifting too heavy for some muscle groups? Or am I lifting too light for other muscle groups? And you will notice that there's a certain play of tension that goes on in the body. And if you use the wrong tension, you're going to get some results for sure, but you might not get ideal results. So this is the reason why you don't see me fanatically saying, hey, high reps are nothing, bro, or, you know, five by five or nothing, bro. The reason why is because I found that I had to break those rep range rules from time to time. So like Jay Cutler, for instance, he was saying eight to 12 reps is where you should stick and stuff. But I find higher rep ranges seem to do better for me, especially with isolation movements. Do better. Is that even, is that even a proper way to speak? Speaking of do better, there's, I'm playing Batman forever on the arcade unit. See, I knew it. I knew it. And I suck at it. It's like kind of a fun game, but I don't have all the special moves figured out. So if you guys know the special moves to Batman Forever, let me know what those are and uh, post them down in the comments so that way I can get a better high score on Batman. So some examples of what I'm talking about are uh, Ben Over Rose, for instance. I found that I can get some good results with, you know, seven, eight reps if I do super heavy, but because there's so much stress on the lower back because of that with using super heavy weights, and of course the bent over row isn't a really long range of motion type of movement. I found that doing sets of 10 to 20 reps, if not 25 to 30 reps is more ideal for my bent over row training. Whereas bench presses, I find doing sets of seven to 15 is the perfect sweet spot. And then of course I have high rep days. And if I include a high rep day from time to time and then go back to the heavier weights and do low reps, I get much better development and strength from that. It's not as much an either or with every single movement. Like sometimes you'll find that you need to rep out and do heavy weights with a body part, but there will be certain times such as in certain isolation movements where you never go super heavy. Otherwise it's an injury waiting to happen and there's no extra benefit for the injury risk, right? A preacher curl would be one of those things. Doing super heavy preacher curls is kind of a dumb thing to do. I mean, I know it's, it's, not dumb for somebody that doesn't know any better, but it would be dumb uh, if you know what you're doing because you'll realize that there's just so much tension on the ligaments and tendons. And is there actually extra benefit for muscle growth and strength? I would say not because yeah, some movements just lend themselves to heavyweight better than others. Another example of heavyweight versus lightweight is squats. Squats can be effective in both ranges, but you will notice that certain muscles will develop with high reps and then other muscles from the same movement will develop from heavier weights, right? So that's the other reason why you want to switch the rep ranges up and you don't want to get too attached to one rep range or another, because I find using a little bit lighter weight, but doing super high reps and burning out those quads is going to burn a little bit extra fat, burn some calories, right? But it's also going to really hit those quads in a, in a more aggressive way. Whereas when I'm using super heavy weight with squats, your groove changes, or at least my groove changes. And I find then I start to hit more hamstring and ass, right? So this is why you mix the rep ranges up. You're, you're going to find that some body parts do not respond well to heavy weight at all, or some body parts do not respond to super lightweight at all. And then you're going to see that there's a lot of exercises or body parts that respond to both, but 
if you do too much or, or exclusively only one rep range, you're shortchanging yourself in the results. So this is why in my workout programs, I do switch the rep ranges up quite a bit. And you're gonna notice that by switching rep ranges regularly, you're going to get a better overall benefit and you're going to discover by accident which rep ranges your body seems to really respond better to. Mountain. So yeah, I hope this helps out in your training. Thanks a lot for watching. If you need to get hold of me, just go to naturalgallantbodybuilding.com and thanks to the patient supporters where I'm doing a podcast every week. If you haven't tuned into the podcast, you're, you're really missing out. Honestly, I don't even know I don't even know why you even come here if you're not listening to the podcast. It's it's like it's like not coming to my birthday party, which none of you came to. Okay, that's a bad example. Natural land.